I want to talk to you more about feelings and how to harness feelings. We need to just talk about what a feeling kind of really is. And I'm not saying you don't know what your feelings are. But how do we get certain feelings? And I brushed on this through the previous videos, but I want to spend more time on it because I want you to think about it even more. To some degree, to a large degree, we have control of our feelings. Uh, I, I think when you have trauma, you can still work with your feelings. Something big that happens in your life that's very negative. I think you can still do these things. But we're going to talk about outside of trauma, just normal, everyday life. Leave trauma aside, which may to some degree be an exception to what I'm saying. But the general rule about feelings is this. We actually generate our own feelings. For example, two people go to the same event, have the same experiences basically, are observing the same things. One comes away with a negative experience, one comes away with a positive experience. Each is focusing on a different thing. It's funny, I was talking to my wife and we were talking about feelings and I said, do you remember how happy you used to be? Do you remember how you'd sit there and you, when she was pregnant and she would have her, her baby you know, in her womb and, and maybe she'd, she'd touch her stomach and think about the future of this child and what it'll be like to hold this baby in, in, in her arms and, and as it grows up and the experiences they'll have and, and the joy and how through thinking she could make herself happy. I think you can think of a lot of examples of things as you anticipate some future event, if you're planning for a vacation or be with a special person, that just thinking about them will make you very excited and arouse you in incredible ways just by thinking. Notice how we thought and how we visualized, how we saw that future event affected everything in us right now. And so you can have that in a very positive way or a negative way. And we, we know that we have felt horrible about a moment now because we've thought about some future event that may or may not happen. And we've just ruined our current moment and put us maybe into despair or depression. So you see, this naturally will happen. You'll just start thinking about something that's positive and get your mind wrapped up in it and see it in your mind and get excited or vice versa. So, but we never often just taken control of this. Now, I have an aversion to people saying, just think happy thoughts. Uh, I'm just not a law-law kind of guy. In spite of the fact that I hate that kind of talk, and it's, um, I don't know, I really hate it. <laughs> okay, it just seems so weird. In spite of my feelings for that, there is a truth in that. And that I can think of positive things in the future, tons of them, that are real and not fantasy, that can affect how I am now. Now, I don't know why your mind and my mind in general, we're, we're all different, and so we're different in these degrees, but we'll tend more towards the negative. I think most of us do. Some people are, quote unquote, the classic optimists that never see bad, and, and, and maybe they exist, but I think we're just all in degrees of, of degrees of negativity, extremely negative to only slightly negative, okay? So we're all dealing with this. But we can actually harness our mind, it's not a tricky thing, instead of it accidentally happening where we think of something negative and it makes us feel bad, or think of something positive that makes us feel good, we can on purpose move our minds toward faith and our words toward faith. To some degree, there's no excuse for being sad in a general sense, being hopeless in a general sense, not anticipating prayer, not excited about what God is going to do in your life and in our community. That has maybe become something you call normal, but in the kingdom, in a spiritual sense, it's not normal. For us who are Christians, we have every reason to be positive for the future. 
and excited for the future and hopeful in prayer and hopeful in all the difficult situations in our life that God is moving and changing those, hopeful that our community will be changed, that should be normal for you. If that's not where you're at right now, you need to on purpose your thinking towards faith and hope. It's through simple um, laziness, really laziness, not applying this to ourselves, that we're walking around sad and hopeless about the future. Thinking, oh gosh, the church will never grow. Oh my gosh, nobody wants to know Jesus. Oh my gosh, my kids are faithless. Uh, Whatever you start to relate to these feelings about the future because of your thinking, you need to take charge of your thinking and start on purpose, make time, and start thinking about things that are true and hopeful and faith-filled that will fill you in this moment so you can go out and do the job to fulfill those hopeful prayers you're going to make.